So unfortunately, it looks like Lucia Auth, which is the package I've been using for authentication in my little starter kit and some other projects, is going to be deprecated early next year. So what does that mean for you if you just started a project or if you cloned my starter kit? It doesn't mean too much because getting off of Lucia is actually really easy. So if you look at this early preview, the plan is the maintainer is going to provide some nice documentation to walk you through how you can set up your auth yourself. And he has code snippets that basically map directly to if you're using Drizzle like I am in my projects, how you can basically write the functions as it was working inside of Lucia. And this is something that I just did on my starter kit. I went through this documentation. I applied it to my starter kit. Uh, basically, it's just like two files I had to change. And now everything's working as it did before. But instead, I'm not using Lucia anywhere. If I search this whole project for Lucia, it doesn't come up because I've removed it. So I'm going to walk you through like the overall way you can get off of it. And then also kind of like we should probably talk about open source, okay? I have been kind of vocal about open source. And the more packages you depend on, the higher chance that these packages will be deprecated. They will have issues. You have to update them. And I would, again, recommend find ways to use less and less third-party libraries, if that's even a possibility. Because as we saw in this package, it was a third-party package maintained by a single person. I'm pretty sure he's like 20 years old, probably in college, didn't have time to actually do all this stuff anymore. And he deprecated it. And this isn't a new occurrence. I've seen this all the time in the JavaScript ecosystem. We don't, you'll use a package, then next year there's a new hype package that you use instead, and then you have to keep switching packages and packages. So the main takeaway is A, try to use less packages, and B, make sure that you isolate where your library is being used. Um, in this case, my Lucia library was only used in like a couple of files, like maybe four or five files. And so refactoring that away, super easy. If it was a different library and you had this library, who, who knows what library it is? Let's say it's like Lodash. And you have Lodash sprinkled throughout hundreds of files. And then all of a sudden they come through and say, hey, Lodash is being deprecated. That's going to be a lot more work. So it might be a good idea, depending on the library and how much uh, blast radius it has in your project, to use a little wrapper around it so that if you ever need to get off of it, you just have to change one file and that's it instead of having to go and change a bunch. Anyway, that's my tip for you guys. How do you get off of this thing? Okay, well, I would recommend reading through this because he does explain how auth works. He explains like what these functions do. He explains why we generate a session token using uh, this function instead of using math.random. It's a lot of good information. I highly recommend understand auth a little bit. Don't just pull in an auth library and use it because auth is too scary or too hard to do. It's, it's not too bad, right? Read through this. Tells you how to create a session. He tells you how to actually like validate the session token. If you want to skip to the fast part, just go to the bottom, copy all this code and put it into a file called like sessions.ts. And that is going to have all the functions you need to get Lucia working like it used to or get your code working against something that's kind of like Lucia using Drizzle. And then go through your code base and anywhere that you're doing Lucia.validate session, instead what you do is click on this migrate from Lucia v3. And here's all you need to do. Anywhere you're doing Lucia create session, instead you just call those methods that we just talked about. Anywhere you're calling validate session, instead you call validate session token. Anywhere you're invalidating the session, you do invalidate session. And then the cookie ones, create session cookie and create blank session cookie. There are functions for this as well. If you go to cookies, those two methods I talked about for cookies are here. And it's using the next headers cookie library to kind of remove and set cookies. All right, let's look at the first function, generate session token. So this is basically just generating a, a really long random string of characters, right? And we use a crypto library instead of math.random because it's more secure. And that is explained in the documentation that he talked about over here. And this is the token that is going to be put in the user's browser, okay? Now let's keep going. We have create session. And this is something that's going to take in that token that we just talked about, and it actually hashes it. So we get a session ID, and the session ID looks like this, and that's what we store in the database. Okay, so we don't store the actual token in the database, we store a hash of the token. Now the reason we do this, the hashing, is because if someone were to accidentally gain access to your database or breach your database, even though you might have thousands of user sessions in here, they couldn't do anything with the session because they need the real token and not this hashed ID. Okay, so that's why we're hashing it. Now let's look down here, a validate session token. This takes in that token, which will be on a cookie in the user's browser. And again, we hash it to get that ID. And then we look it up in the database. So that'll just go up here and grab this. And then we make sure that it 
exists, and if it doesn't, we return just null and null. And then we look up the user and make sure that the user exists using that session row. If it exists, then good. Now what we need to do is check if the token is expired. So if the token is expired, notice over here we have an expires at on this row. If it is expired, we just go ahead and delete that session row and then we return uh, session null user null, okay? If the session is less than half the session expiration time, which happens to be 15 days. So if you look at the session and it's under 15 days, what happens is we just extend the session by another 30 days and then we update the database so that'll go over here and update this. And now we just return the session in the user and whatever is using this would know that it's a valid token because we checked that it exists, the user exists, and that the date hasn't expired yet. And then down here we have invalidate session, which just deletes the session from the table. So all these functions, this is the, the most complicated one to understand, but really it's not too hard to understand, right? It's like the, the logic's pretty simple. Now, as far as using this, like, let's just check out the login. By the way, I've already committed this change to the starter kit. If you want to go and check it out, the code is all there, free to use. Um, if you want to read through my code and try to understand how it all works, there's an auth file and there's also a session file. So let's take a look at the email login. So a person passes in an email and a password. And what I do is I first verify, hey, does the password match the user in the database? And if so, we get back user object. And then comes the session part, the, the thing that Lucia used to do, which is setting the session on the user's cookie. So let's dive into that function. What this is going to do is going to call generate session token, which we just talked about. All it does is just generate a random, um, and then it calls create session. Let's look at this. All this is doing, again, is hashing that token that we just generated, and it puts it in the database, and then it returns it. And then finally we call set session token cookie, which takes in that token and then takes in expiration time. Okay. This is just setting a cookie on the user's browser. And again, this can be found right here. If you go to cookies and go to Next.js, that same code is just right here. Awesome. And so now we've set a cookie on the user's browser. And then when they come back into the app and try to load a page, at some point we need to verify that the user making the request has access. So let's look at validate request. This is getting that session token from the cookie. So it's just doing cookies.get by the session name and getting the value. If it doesn't exist, we return nothing. And then we call that validate method we just talked about, which is going to do all that database logic where it looks up the session, looks up the user, make sure it doesn't expire, extends the expiration time and it re-updates it, etc. So that's the flow. You log in, you set a session, you put it on the user's cookie. And then when they go and navigate to a page or try to do an action, you look at the cookie, you verify that the cookie is valid, and if it is, you return some data. If not, you return nulls or undefines, or you can throw errors if you want to, and your UI and your backend logic can do if statements to say if session is equal to null, then don't do anything. And I believe I wrap this in another method called get current user, which basically just uses this and returns either the user or undefined. And then I use get current user all over my code base, right? So I basically say get current user. If they're not defined and they're not signed in. Um, let's look at some other places. Okay, right here, membership button, get the current user. If it's not defined, return null. I also have like an assert authenticated, which you call this and you should expect the user back. And if it doesn't, it just throws an error. So that's kind of like the overview. Getting off of Lucio was not hard at all. I mean, it does take some time reading through the docs. Um, so it might be a little bit overwhelming, but again, just keep in mind that it's really just like copying these four functions, also copying these cookie examples and just using them. That's it. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching again. Feel free to check out my starter kit. If you want to read through that code base, to understand how I got off of Lucy off. But uh, other than that, I mean, good luck. Have a good day. Happy coding.